Hey everybody, Ed Holmwood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. I hope you're doing well today. Today is going to be the review of the Cambridge Audio MXN10 Network Player. Um, I have it still installed in my system because I think I'm going to do some sound clips. Uh, I actually have a French recording record label that's going to allow me to do some use some of their copyrighted material for sound clips, but I'm still waiting on the final approval. So that might be a separate video. <clears throat> What I'd like to do first, though, is I've obviously, obviously talked about the Cambridge MXN10 in other videos. So what I'd like to do is cut away now and show the Cambridge Stream Magic software, which runs on Android and or iOS, uh, and give you an overview real quick of how the Stream Magic software functions. So we'll cut to that now, and then I'll be back for a final summation. I've got my Android tablet now in a landscape orientation, which of course formats better for video. And on the home screen, you'll see in the center just about Stream Magic. So we're going to go ahead and start the app. Now the player itself is in powered down in standby mode. Um, and you'll see on the bottom, right above where it says Home Library Radio and More, standby mode. We'll talk about that in just a second. So this is the start screen you get. It shows the, uh, the unit you're listening to. If you have more than one Stream Magic unit, you can access any of them or as many of them as you want from the app. Then there's the standby button, which will then put the unit into standby. It is currently in standby. And then the settings. And the settings are just the basic stuff, you know, uh, for Chromecast or for uh, AirPlay, you know, standby mode. You want network standby. So it stays ready to go when I start the app and power it up from the app. Then it wakes up and does its own thing. Automatic power down. You can set that. Rune ready. Preamp. It's got a built-in volume control, which is great for folks with vintage hi-fi gear. And we'll talk about that. Uh, and then, of course, firmware and things like that and factory reset. I've never had any issues. I've never had to reset, so it's fine. Now, it shows the list of sources, and you can see you can edit that and add. Right now, I've currently got my CoBuzz account, my Tidal account, Bluetooth, and I believe it's AppTex, and I'll put, it, I'll put a caption on the screen saying exactly what it is. Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect, uh, Internet Radio, which is a great function we'll talk about a little bit, and Media Library, which would be either my an, an, a NAS storage device or a hard drive plugged directly into the unit. And then we'll scroll down a little bit and you'll see presets. There's four buttons on the front of the unit and you can set those up to be whatever you want to. In my case, it happens to be, uh, first one is WFMT classical station here in Chicago. Number two is WONC North Central College uh, radio, which is my alma mater, go Cardinals. And number three is a Cambridge MXN10 evaluation playlist I created when I as I was evaluating the unit and there'll be a link to that in the video description and then the Fahrenheit project is the number four it's another playlist of mine and then underneath it'll show recent radio stations whatever I've listened to and then down below is what's new so uh, product updates you know we had a firmware update for the device or an update for the stream magic software it'll show what those updates were and what it means or access to them so again, along the bottom, you'll see home, library, radio, and more. And above that, you'll see a green bar that says standby. So I'm going to go ahead on the right-hand side and push the power button and the units woke up right now. So from here, we would go, and I'm going to start actually on the bottom uh, where it says home, library, radio, and more. I'm going to start with the more button. By the way, you notice it popped up WFMT. That was the last thing I was listening to in the Stream Magic app. So that's what pops up. It remembers whatever your, your, your most recent play was. So I'm going to hit more just to show you. Again, app settings, it shows, you know, darker light theme, restore prompts. If you have any uh, issues, sign in and register the unit. I haven't because this is not my unit. It is actually uh, Cambridge's unit. And so back out and again on the bottom bar, we're going left to, excuse me, right to left. We're going to go to radio and it'll show all of the radio stations that are available. Now, uh, it picks up on my location because it asked me where I am, again, for directing me toward radio stations. So it shows all the local broadcast stations that offer streaming. It also shows worldwide stations that offer streaming. So it could be a broadcast station in Los Angeles or New York or Paris or Brussels or whatever. And you have access to just so much stuff, um, just tons of stuff. You know, and then, again, by definition, Decades, if you like oldies and things like that. Talk radio, sports, if you want to follow a team, maybe you're not in market or can't get the radio station for it. And then just every category you can think of is available. What a great way to discover new music. What a great way to listen to music differently than you might normally do. 
you know, a little bit outside your comfort zone, instead of just playing the same playlist you have in Spotify or Tidal or letting Spotify pick the songs for you, go to the radio and you'll find some really interesting stuff and a great way to discover music. So that's radio. Again, on the bottom uh, row of buttons, we're going left to right. So the next one would be library. And this takes me out to whatever the last thing I was connected to, which in this case happened to be the hard drive. But it shows my library right now. So Tidal and Cobuzz, and it shows what level of account I have with them. Tidal is high fidelity because everybody gets HD now. Uh, and Cobuzz is, again, they have a high quality uh, option, and I can get up to 24192 on that. If you had a Deezer account, you can log in and have Deezer as well. I don't. If we scroll down, we'll see it's servers. Now, if I had a NAS server with music on it, I'd be able to access it through my home network, no problem. And then USB drives. So that's great. So I have a hard drive plugged in. It's got a gabillion songs on it uh, and I can have access to all of those things. So let's scroll back up and let's go ahead and start with Tidal. And what brings up is Tidal's actual stuff that you would see normally in the Tidal app. So like recommended, it's going to show different stuff that they're recommending. So this is their algorithm recommending stuff. And again, title happens to, their algorithm tends to be more popular kind of stuff. And I can look at it as you can see in thumbnails or in the upper left-hand corner, a little button, and I can look at it as a list. So however, whatever makes the most sense for you, and again, back to thumbnails, you can. So again, the first listings of stuff, search, recommended, releases, charts, title, rising, my mix, playlists, and genres. That's all the title created material that they're pushing forth or the algorithm is giving you. Where you see the heart, that's my collection. These are the things that I've stored and favored in title, the album or artists I follow. So let's go ahead and we'll just go playlists really quick. And it populates all of my playlists that I have in title. And there's a bunch of different ones. Now I created a playlist called Cambridge MXN 10. There'll be a link in the description as I mentioned. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit play all and start that playlist. So now it opens up uh, and you'll see T for the Tillman pop up. If I touch that bar, then it brings up all of the things. Now it says 32 items because I had this open before. Would you believe I've had to record this a couple times? Anyway, so it shows the playlist and all that information on the left-hand side. Excuse me, on the right-hand side, the other left. And then on the other left, <laughs> it shows the album information, the album cover, and it shows the lapse time, total time, and underneath it shows this is track three of 32 in the queue. Then under the title of the song, the artist, and the album name, you'll see it says 44.1 16-bit FLAC file. So it will identify the file. Now below the play, skip, uh, you know, random and repeat, you'll see a volume slider. And so I can actually control volume from here. Now, I, I don't want to get a copyright strike. This is an amazing function and feature for someone with vintage hi-fi that may not have remote controls. Now, it's great to have a streamer with a touch panel, uh, touch control on it, and they look pretty, but you're going to get up out of your seat and want to go over and touch the panel. Now, granted, you can control those from a tablet just like you can do this. For me, the difference is not the glitzy features. For me, the difference is the sound quality. And I'll discuss the, the sound quality in the, in the main body of, the, of this video, and it is exceptional, but we'll leave it at that for right now. So again, title, my cue, what I'm playing right now, everything's right there. Now, if I come back out and I can go back out to my collection and all the way back to, and I'm gonna hit the library button in the bottom, and it's gonna take me out to the main library screen. And the same thing for Cobuzz. Search, discover, my playlist genres, that's all Cobuzz generated stuff. And then favorites, which of course is the stuff that I like. So that's Cobuzz. Now we're going to slide down here and I'm going to go to the USB drive and I'm going to hit and open up. I have a Seagate portable hard drive connected to it and we're going to touch that. It'll take a second to find the root directory. There's just a ton of stuff on this hard drive. Um, hang on a second. Of course, it's always going to glitch in the middle of a demo, right? So now it finds it and that's the hard drive. I promise it's the cable. So now it shows the root directory of the hard drive and everything that's in it. And you'll see digital music and SACD. SACD is all of my DSD rips. And guess what? We can do DSD through the Cambridge MXN 10. It's fabulous. Now I'm gonna hit digital music and you're gonna see it populate the folders and there are a million of them. So it'll take just a second to do as it, as it organizes all of that stuff. And you can set it up to have the thumbnails or you can set it up to have a list. I personally like the thumbnails. Now you'll notice that the files show a file folder 
in the, then the Academy of Ancient uh, Music or Academy of Ancient M Music has one album in it, so it picked up that uh, album information, right? So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you some some other stuff. We're going to scroll down here a little bit, and you'll see that it all says file folders, and where there's only one album, it'll populate it with the artwork. So now I'm going to come to Acoustic Alchemy. And I'm going to touch that and it will show all the albums and their artwork right there because you can't have a fold. You can't have a picture attached to a folder, but in the particular albums you can have in the metadata, you can have the album cover artwork there. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit the reference point album. You'll see it there. I'm going to hit play all. Now that will add it to the queue. I'm going to open up the queue real quick and show you everything that's in the queue all of the stuff that I've been listening to. We're going to come back out here and you'll see that it's playing reference point, the song. And there it is. And again, with the volume control. And everything's right there. And now this happens to be a 272 kilobits MP3 file. So to play that, it'll play Og Vorbis, it'll play FLAC, it'll play AAC. I think there's another format from Apple called AFF or AAF. Um, so lots of different formats, it'll play them all, not a problem, including the DSD, and it'll go uh, up to 24, or 32-bit, 768, and up to DSD 512. Um, and of course, there's no information up there, <laughs> but 2496 and 24192 sounds awesome on it. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of here. I'm going to go ahead and go back to library. And I'm going to come back down and I'm going to go back into the hard drive. I'm going to go back into the Seagate portable and I'm going to go to SACD. Now, the interesting thing we'll see here is it populates all of my SACD rips. You'll notice that there's a music note and then file folders. Well, music note means there's only one album in the folder. So if I go to three doors down, there's only one album here, right? If I come back out and I go to... Let's say, um, let's pick something interesting. Uh, let's go to, yeah, let's go to Albert King. And you'll see all of the albums come in. There's Albert King and, you know, again, with SACDs, their metadata is very poor. You would manually have to add uh, images and things like that, recording dates and stuff like that. It, those DSF, that's what a DSD RIP file is called. It's a .DSF contains no metadata on its own. It was never meant to. It was only meant to be played as a disc. So we go ahead and hit Albert King. It'll it'll bring up the list of all of the songs. And let's say we want to play called Stormy Monday. That's been added to the queue. It'll pop up. I can hit that. We'll go into it and you'll see, you know, again, the queue with all, everything in it. In this case, the queue only has the DSD folder. And then underneath on the left-hand side, you'll see it's a DSD 64. And you get again the volume control which is really good and really smooth so that's DSD playback so that's pretty much everything when it comes to the stream magic software we're gonna go ahead and go back to the library and it's super simple super easy to use and it populates really really quickly so if we go back to the home screen again there's everything there and again we can just hit a preset if we want to and I can go ahead and put the unit in standby mode, and now the unit's powered itself down, and you can see it's in standby. And if I wanna repower it up, that's it. So that's the Stream Magic software from Cambridge on the MXN10. It is easy, it's not, is it flashy and glitzy and crazy cool and EQs and all that? No, but I don't think that that's really what the purpose of this is. Um, knowing Cambridge and having experience with their products, sound quality is the biggest thing for them. And it's the audio quality that I think is it's most important for me. This app is very usable. It's friendly. It's easy to use. It's not glamorous, but it doesn't meet, need to be because I don't want to be looking at the app. I want to be listening to the music. So that's really the tail of the tape on the uh, Cambridge Stream Magic software package. And again, we'll talk more about the sound quality of the unit in the regular body of the review. Well, as you can see, Stream Magic software is really easy to use and robust. It's nice and basic and simple, and I like that. It's quick to navigate, it responds well. And again, all I'm looking for is to get to a track, get to an album, get to an artist, get to an album, get to a track, and have it play. And it does that extremely well, and it did it without any glitches, and it was super easy to set up. So I really appreciate that. Now, when I tested the MXN10, I did it in the following fashion. I had the analog output using the internal DAC 
connected to my Cambridge AXR100. I had an optical output going from the MXN10 to my shit Bifrost multi-bit. I had a coaxial output going into a Lox GD30 DAC. So I had the Lox Jesus Saber DAC and the uh, DAC or the uh, uh, Cambridge MXN10 is a Saber DAC, and of course the Bifrost is an RDR multi-bit. So I could switch instantly between those three different sources. So I could compare the internal DAC with two different external DACs. And how did it stack up? Well, if we start with what was the least rewarding was the LOX GD30 without question. It's a nice DAC. It does a good job with DSD. Um, I'm looking for a better solution for DSD than that, but I had it initially as a headphone amp on my desktop. So the LOX G Bass was okay, not extended, not very much definition. Mid-bass was okay, not a lot of punch. Not bad, but not a lot of punch. And mid-range was coolish, kind of a little bit of glare in the upper mid-range through into the upper frequencies. Kind of what, I guess, is kind of a cliche of Delta Sigma DAX sound, especially budget Delta Sigma DAX sound. A little glary, a little thin. And that's what the LOX G sounded like. Now, Next in line, as far as performance goes, was the MXN10. Um, it was way better bass definition, way better bass extension, more texture. Uh, mid bass had much better punch and more kind of oomph to it. Uh, mid range was very good, slightly cool, just ever so slightly cool, um, but good definition. Vocals sounded very good. Female or male vocals sounded really good, but there was just a little, just a, and this is a very subtle thing, just a little bit of sheen to it. Upper, the upper frequencies, good detail in the upper frequencies, a good sense of air, way better sense of air and space than the locks she had. Um, and so nice detail, cymbals sounded like cymbals. Um, there was, you could sense the room, you could get good air out of it. So, um, and from a soundstage t standpoint, the Cambridge is way better than the Loxy. The Loxy lived within the speakers. Good, good center image, but not much depth at all. With the Cambridge, we had a good wide, got outside the, the width of the speakers, and went deep very nicely. Now, compared to the Bifrost. The Bifrost does everything better, no question, but it should. It's an $800 DAC, I think, is the current price for them. Uh, and we're talking about a $500 all-in-one network player and DAC. This held its own really well. The differences between this and the Bifrost were subtle, but Bifrost is, has better bass extension, much more texture and, and resolution in the bass and mid-bass. Uh, vocals, to my taste, right on the line between just neutral and slightly warm, and I kind of like that. On the upper end, the upper frequencies, the two were very similar to the Cambridge and the Bifrost. Both had very good detail, very good, you know, cymbals sounded really natural and really normal. The Bifrost might have just a bit more air. And again, the soundstage exceeded the width of the speakers um, and was very deep and very high. But you would expect that given its cost, and it's a single purpose device. This is doing two different things. Well, actually doing several different things. So, Where's the Cambridge set? You know what? I could gladly live with this in my system forever. It is that good. It was that satisfying to listen to. Um, any of you who know me know that I listen for hours on end at a time, and I'll listen to a wide variety of things. Um, everything from literally from EDM, and you'll see I made a playlist that, that, of tracks I used to test this unit. It'll be a title playlist, and the link will be in the description below, so you can check it out. And you'll see I listen to a wide variety of things. Um, and this acquitted itself very well. I mean, I was, it was better than I expected. And I hate to say that I should have known better. It's a Cambridge product. They're all built very well. And they're all designed to be, I think, in my opinion, sound quality first, build quality. And then if it's going to have features or whatever, it's going to have the, the, the things necessary to get the job done. And that's really all I expect. I mean, my AXR100 is not fancy at all as far as interfaces and whiz bang stuff, but Oh my goodness, does it sound wonderful. And the combination of this and the AXR100, again, I could live with that forever very, very uh, satisfactorily. Uh, I didn't feel like I was missing anything. Um, sometimes a little bit, but then I'm kind of spoiled with the Bifrost. But again, if I didn't have the Bifrost, I would be happy to live with this forever. And I'd be happy to live with this plugged into the Bifrost. Although, Honestly, the internal DAC is really, really good. So it's got great build quality. It's got a great power supply. It's easy to use, great connectivity on the back. No, it doesn't have uh, HDMI, eARC, or whatever. 
I don't care if I've gone on, I'm just going to take an optical out for my TV and plug it into the, into my, um, AXR 100 anyway. So I don't really care about having eARC. And again, you know, this is not meant to be an external DAC for any other source other than its own thing. So highly recommended. I really, really like it. I'm going to be sorry to see it go. Um, but you know, it is what it is. So I would appreciate a like and subscribe. If you like what I'm doing, please, you know, give me a subscription. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. We're getting closer. The problem is, is I look at the analytics and I see about 80% of you guys that are watching aren't subscribing. Do me a favor, please. And just give me a subscription. I'm trying to build a channel. I'm also trying to put together a community. So comment, please comment. Uh, if any of you have ever commented on my videos, you know, I always answer them. I always respond. If there's something I can help you with, I'll put those answers in there. You also in the description of my videos and right here is my email address. And if you have a long form question or a long form statement that you want to make that really isn't suitable for the comment section, email me. I do look at that as well. Um, and so, you know, I really would appreciate more interaction from you guys, like subscribe, comment, so forth. Um, I am probably going to, as I mentioned in the beginning of this, I'm probably going to do a sound clip video with the MXN10 and the AXR100, um, but I'm going to do it as a separate video. An interesting thing, I reached out to a French record label called Ultime, and I listened to a lot of their stuff. And actually in the playlist, you'll find uh, uh, some stuff from the Ultime label. Um, and I asked them if there was a way I could use some of their tracks in my video. And so we're working out a copyright arrangement that um, I won't get a copyright strike if I use some of their tracks. So I should know more about that uh, with it very quickly and before I release the sound clips uh, video. And if I can't, then I'll mention it in that sound clips video. So everybody, thank you so very much. I would appreciate a like. I would appreciate your subscription and please comment. And I look forward to doing another video here for you very soon. This is Ed Homewood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel, signing off. Thank you.